Hello, everyone, and welcome. Does the battle between the religion scholars and Darwin's theory of natural selection frustrate or confuse you? Are the scholars who oppose this theory wrong? Please watch this video where I'll present statements from a scholar who opposes evolution. See if you can spot some of the ways the scholar got evolution wrong. For more about getting to the truth about science, religion, or both, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell button so you can be notified when I post new videos. How can you know whether a scholar or anyone has valid evidence to refute evolution and Darwin's theory of natural selection? By the end of this video, you'll have three takeaway points for recognizing whether a person understands everything about the theory of evolution or is simply wrong. My name is Dr. Suhaila Smith from RiseofTruth.com. You're here for the truth, so let's press on and seek it. We're going to look at three claims for refuting evolution made by a religion scholar, Dr. Suleiman Ashkar, a graduate of Al Azhar University. He wrote a book translated into English called Belief in God. In this book, he gives us his explanation of Darwin's theory of natural selection. Ashkar's first misconception is that Darwin's theory of natural selection is equivalent to abiogenesis or the origin of life. He says, Natural selection. Elimination factors cause the weak and frail beings to perish and the strong ones to survive. They call this law survival of the fittest. So the strong and healthy creature survives and passes its strong traits to its offspring. With time, the strong traits gather to make a new trait in the organism. This is abiogenesis that makes the being with these primary traits evolve into a higher organism. In this manner, evolution continues to occur, and that is progression. So, in this quote, Eschkar is speaking about abiogenesis and evolution interchangeably, but they're not the same. Abiogenesis is a theory that explains the origin of the first replicators or the original life forms and how they emerged on the Earth. Abiogenesis doesn't have anything to do with Darwin's theory of natural selection or the laws of natural selection. It also doesn't have to do with the traits of the organism. Instead, it deals with how the first protein or the first self-replicator, representing the simplest origin of life, came into existence. Organisms evolving and carrying new traits through the process of evolution isn't abiogenesis. Evolution is about how organisms have changed from the original life form to what we see today, and that includes all life form. A new organism expressing enough traits to separate from its relatives throughout the process of evolution is called speciation and diversification, and this is different than abiogenesis. If you're with me on the difference between abiogenesis and the theory of evolution, please comment, yes, I understand, underneath the video. So to sum it up, point number one then is abiogenesis or the origin of life is not equivalent to evolution and natural selection. The second misconception about evolution by the scholar has to do with the sudden appearance of a completely functional organ. He includes the following quote in his book. Professor Nabil George, one of the reliable scientists in this field, says, For that reason, natural selection does not explain the theory of abiogenesis or evolution. It only explains that the least fit will die and that some characteristics will spread among the species. Those who speak of evolutionary leaps mean that an animal which did not have an eye suddenly had an eye because of the action of some rays. There are a couple of issues here. Regarding his statement that natural selection does not explain the theory of abiogenesis or evolution, that is true. Natural selection doesn't explain the theory of abiogenesis, as I mentioned. However, it's not true that natural selection doesn't relate to evolution. It's not the only explanation for evolution, but it is one of the ways that evolution occurs and it's one of the fundamental mechanisms to explain evolution and the diversity of life we see today, as, we, as we've already touched upon. Then he goes on to say, 
Those who speak of evolutionary leaps mean that an animal which did not have an eye suddenly had an eye because of the action of some rays. But nobody says that. Evolution doesn't say that. According to the theory of evolution, the eye didn't come into existence suddenly. At first, there were cells that sensed the organism's environment. These cells then specialized in sensing light. After that, they multiplied and arched. This is how the present day eye evolved. It took very small but cumulative steps over millions of years and many time periods. The second problem here is this definition of an evolutionary leap. Now, there is an ongoing debate about mechanisms of evolution and how fast or how slow evolution can occur. But no one says that an evolutionary leap is as he describes in this example, where an organism with no eyes suddenly has one because of the action of some rays, which probably means mutation due to radioactive bombardment. So in conclusion, complete organs such as the eye don't suddenly appear, as that's not what the theory of evolution states. Misconception number three by the scholar is that genetics disproves evolution. The scholar goes on to make more arguments and in this example, he's supporting his statement, which he says is a fact. He says, the science of genetics disproves Darwin's theory as experience shows. We've heard about evidence to support evolution. Fossil evidence, evidence from comparative anatomy, from developmental embryology, and many other branches of science. But what about genetics? Genetics is the study of heredity. And genes are units of heredity that are transferred from one generation to the next. So genes carry information and consist of DNA. DNA is important in evolution because heredity is a component of evolution, meaning evolution can occur unless genes or DNA is passed on to subsequent generations. The similarity in DNA between all organisms tells us how closely related they are to one another, including us. The evidence from genetics overwhelmingly confirms evolution and is another part of the amazing world of science that points to the truth about our existence and relationship to other forms of life. So the opposite of what the scholar said is true. Genetics actually confirms evolution. Now you have three examples of arguments that people who want to disprove evolution use and how you can respond to those arguments. But are there even more arguments that people present to disprove evolution? As you might have guessed, there are. I'll share two more very interesting arguments in the next video. You're not going to want to miss those. And if you want to join a community of people just like you who are curious and want to know the truth, then please join our Facebook group, Rise of Truth, where we discuss topics just like this on our journey of seeking the absolute. We look forward to having you there with us. And if you like this video, please tell me by liking it below and please subscribe and share it with your friends. Leave a comment if you found this video helpful and let me know what helped you the most. I look forward to your feedback and hearing what you have to say and responding to your comments. I'll see you in the next video and thanks so much for watching.